Have you ever wondered what someone meant? Why a piece of art sticks out to you so much? Or why, when you read a book for the second time, do you find new meaning within it? Well, if that's the case, you may be interested in hermeneutics, the philosophy of meaning. And in that case, I'm Joel Turk, and I welcome you to The Meaning Group. Now, people oftentimes ask me, what is hermeneutics in its scope and in its nature? And in that case, hermeneutics is simply the study of interpretation, where anytime we look at meaning, anytime we look at why something is important to us, hermeneutics can be applied. And that means it has a giant scope. It can range from simple symbols as stop signs and green lights to more complicated and complex works of literature, legal texts, art, and much more. Essentially, anytime we find meaning in something, or we find something important or interesting, hermeneutics is at play. Now, what is hermeneutics scope and its nature in regards to traditionalist versus romantic and even philosophical hermeneutics? Well, some people have found meaning to be a scientific methodological process, yet over time that's shifted because people have also seen meaning to be the underlying spirit connecting all things and many more interpretations of meaning itself. So with that in mind, hopefully today we'll find more about what meaning is and where it lies. Even more so, let's play a first game with our audience waiting for us inside. everyone, welcome to the Meaning Movement. So our first game's directions are already posted up on the board, and for those of you who are playing along at home, I'll post directions specifically for your screen as well. So all we're going to do is have an object posted in front of you. From there, you're going to write down the first thing that comes to your mind that isn't the object's name itself. So if I was talking about the pen in my hand, I would write the word write or draw. Is everyone clear on the directions? Yeah. And you guys should totally play along with us at home. So I'm gonna reiterate the instructions for you guys playing at home. Basically, I'm gonna show you an image of an object and you're gonna write down the first thing that comes into your mind that is not the name of the object itself. We'll spend about five seconds on each slide. Ready? Let's play. Okay, next. Last but not least. Okay, let's go join our audience and see what they thought. So our audience's results ranged on each symbol. For the first red hexagon, we see that some people thought it meant to stop, while other people just thought it meant red or shape or driving. Next, for symbol two, some people are reminded of recycling, shoes, although I think that might have been misplaced, trees, and even a Google Drive. And lastly, for symbol three, shoe, running, comfy, shoe store, and new all came up within this speedy symbols round. So essentially what we get a look at here is hermeneutics at its most basic scope of the simple symbols in our lives and the fact that these things, although they're just shapes and objects, can actually have meaning. That reflects the hermeneutic principle and importance in our lives. Since hermeneutics is the study of interpretation, the study of meaning essentially. Any time that something as simple as this has meaning, we can look at it through the scope of hermeneutics. And that extends beyond just these simple symbols and into the complexity of legal works, art, literature, and quite frankly, the situations in our lives and how we piece those together into a meaningful whole. Also, what we see here at play is a quick look into what's known as historical situatedness to where, for instance, when we see in symbol two, Google Drive, well, that didn't exist 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago. In this, we see that symbols and meaning in general is constantly becoming. And it gives us a nice foreshadowing of the next question we'll be answering in our next two games of where does meaning lie? So stay tuned for our next game, Riddle Me This. You're solving the riddle given a short story about a passage 
The one catch is the live audience will be able to ask questions in order to open up the world of the text more. Now, you following along at home, I suggest you give yourself two to five minutes to think about the text to see what questions you would have asked. And once you come back and join us, we'll be trying to solve the text and riddle together. Good luck! Welcome back everyone. So from our audience, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Is it raining? No, it is not raining. Yes. Is the man who's running in any type of danger? No, he is not. Yes. Are any of the runners wearing a uniform? Yes. Is he a criminal? No. Does this have anything to do with baseball? Yes. So I'll let you try and solve it from there, but I'm giving you a hint that the baseball clue is very important to solving the riddle. Here in the second game, we get a glimpse into what our second question is. Where does meaning lie? You see, meaning didn't just lie within the text itself and the wording of the text. On the other hand, meaning didn't just lie within one interpretation of the text. Now, in this case, it was a little different due to the fact that we were looking for one solution at the end. That isn't necessarily indicative of all interpretation, but was important for our game. What we see is that meaning lies in what Hans George Gadamer refers to as the fusion of horizons, essentially where the world of the text and the world of the reader get to meet each other. And in this case, those worlds are very important with understanding certain words such as home and mask within this certain situation. We see here that meaning is pretty much the dialogue between us and a text. It's this conversation where each side has to have a sort of humility to come to a new meaning every single time. This also makes meaning inexhaustible for a text and constantly becoming, where every time we hear a text with a new, new situation, it's even more important and given a new aspect of its meaning. So now it's time for our final game. Say what? what? The rules are simple. All you need to do is write down what the quote I put up on the board's meaning is to you. Is everyone ready? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So for those of you who are playing along at home, go ahead and write down what this quote means to you. Take as long as you need and pause the video until you're done. When you unpause the video, you'll join the audience and we'll see some of the meanings that people have picked up from this quote. Of the many meanings that this quote could mean, our audience picked up on a couple of things. First, someone said that this basically means no one is better than another person. Another person picked up on a translation which says both men and women of any color have the same amount of rights. And finally, someone interpreted this to mean that everyone is the same in at least one way. And in a way, all of these are correct. And that's the beauty of interpretation. Within this third game, we see meaning is the dialogue between who we are and who the text is. Within that, it's constantly becoming more and more with every time you read it, with every historical event that happens, and if, with every application that occurs as well. So with that in mind, doesn't that create kind of a problem? If everyone's meaning is correct, how do we find a standardized meaning for it? Don't we risk what's known as subjectivism or even worse, relativism? where everyone is right, so there really isn't any specific way to be right, given that you are automatically right? Well, here Hans-George Gadamer again has another solution for us. That the text itself is constantly unfolding over time. And because of this nature, we're never able to evaluate it for all that it is at one moment in time. Because Fortunately, that text will go beyond our lifetime, beyond the historical events and historical situatedness of the moments of our life, the experiences we'll live, and we'll be able to contribute to this ever-increasing, ever-unfolding 
meaning of the text. Here we see that subjectivity is not a problem. In fact, it's the key to becoming timeless. The problem is in assuming that we can find one meaning that will stick throughout all time and restrict everything that the text can become. When in reality, since the text is constantly unfolding, since meaning is constantly becoming, those are good things and they keep us reading. So let's join our audience for one final goodbye. So thank you everyone for playing. That is our last game. And those of you who followed along at home, thank you so much as well. I hope you learned a little something about meaning. So if you're paying attention today, hopefully what you learned about was first, that hermeneutics is essentially the study of meaning and interpretation. And because of its nature, its scope is endless. It has everything to do with the many symbols in our lives, but also the complexity of legal works and theological works, even literature and art. And the situations of our daily lives have to do with how we interpret them and how we put the aspects of that text or situation into a meaningful whole. So anytime there's meaning, there is hermeneutics. But where does meaning lie? Well, meaning lies not just within the text itself. If that was the case, all men being created equal leaves out quite a lot of people. Instead, we see that meaning is seen in the dialogue between us and a text, and therefore it continues just beyond us. It should also have us treat the text with a bit of humility as we talk about within the problem of subjectivism, where although we can't create a standardized answer that will always be true and never exclude any aspect of a text's meaning, what we can do is approach every text in every situation with a bit of humility to see how we confuse horizons with the world around us. If you are interested in today's episode, I encourage you to keep reading. Specifically, Hermeneutics, A Brief Introduction, by Jen Zimmerman is a great book, and I'll leave more literature down in the description. Now, other than that, have a great day. Continue to fuse horizons, approach life with some humility, and find the meaning in the moment. Thank you.